soup and water or whatever. He protected uh, you from doing that, essentially. He yeah. protected you. It was a protection. Yeah, yeah. So the Lord, he, he let me go just, uh, you know, so, because sometimes we do things so that in the, in the um, not the end of our life, but in our testimonies, we can say, well, I did so and so and so and so. But I didn't. And that's good. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Does that do. make sense I to you? I understand. So you've got to know that you're doing it for him. That's right. So if you eat, you're eating for him. If you drink, you're drinking for him. And if you, you're not uh, doing it for him, then, uh, you know, there, there was really, I think, only one day that was required fast in the uh, law of Moses, and that was the Day of Atonement. And I think that's in, uh, do we have time to turn right quick? Turn to Leviticus right quick. Uh, 16 and about 28. Uh, 28? Yeah, 28, 29, yeah. Uh, 28 is, and he that <coughs> burneth them shall wash his clothes. This has to do with the burning of the bullock for a sin offering. I mean, are you reading or are you talking? I was just, but I was, okay. <laughs> and he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. 29, and this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a strange stranger that's Sojourn among with you. Okay, so here's what that was. That was what he asked them to do. That was once, and they were to do it continually. But when they were delivered, they're fasting, and you know you don't just keep on because you you're you're doing it for self interest rather than for a desire to honor God. So we have to know when we do what we're doing. We're doing it to honor God. And if you don't do it to honor God, then he might require you to do it over again. Hmm. Yes. So they were fasting to be free, correct? Yeah. Well, it, it, the Day of Atonement, that's a, another teaching that I'm not prepared to go into right now. But, yes. Well, I just heard you say that they were fasting mm -hmm. to be free. Mm -hmm. Once you... Have, mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. has accomplished what you were fasting for, then you don't no longer fast for that. Is that correct? Or Because I thought I've heard you say, too, that you don't fast for God to do something. That's not the reason that you're fasting. Yeah, but so you're, now, what you're doing is you're getting free from yourself. See, because you have to be in a position for God to do what he wants to do for you. And so it's not, Lord, I'm going to fast so that I can get this car. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast. I mean... Car, I'm just saying car, but anything. But I'm going to fast so that when my blessing comes, I'll be in a position to receive it. See, because sometimes our hearts are haughty, sometimes our hearts are hard, mm -hmm. and, and so we have to fast so that we bring ourselves, it's to bring ourselves down so that God can bless us with what he's going to bless us with. Because sometimes he blesses us and people get heady, high-minded, exalted, even with titles. You know, he bless you to be president of the chair committee or whatever. You know, you, you get all high-minded. Mm -hmm. So you fast so that when God promotes you to be chairman of the, prayer, of the chair committee, you, you're, you're humbled. So, so it's not fasting to get what God's going to do but you fasted to be in the position to receive what God's going to give you. So they were bound. So if I'm fasting, say I was fasting for deliverance for a family member, that's not what I'm supposed to be fasting for? I'm supposed to be fasting yeah, you're, for Yeah, you're fasting to receive the blessing that God's going to do you because if you believe that he's going to bless you with that family member's salvation, then you have to be in a position to not, I told you so. Okay, I got you. Yeah. It, it, so it's, it's all in a position to humble yourself before God. Fasting humbles you. If you're fasting correctly. 
if yeah, you're fasting it's a, for the right reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then um, uh, let's see. Here, here's what I want to get Which, to. Where are we? Oh, with eighth verse, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, "Thus says the Lord of hosts: Execute true justice, show mercy and compassion, <clears throat> everyone to his brother." Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, mm. the alien or the poor. Let none of you plant evil in his heart against his brother. Now he says, this is, see, see that their, their disobedience is what resulted in their captivity. Mm. So he said, obedience is better than fasting. But we have to fast sometimes to humble ourselves to be obedient. That's right. Because obedience is what God is calling for. And most of us, I mean human beings, just not, you know, everybody, most of us are not too obedient. We haven't, we haven't learned obedience. Okay, so I got it. So we're fasting so that we can be completely under submission for the Lord. And so God has us going on long periods of fast, that's because there's stuff that needs to come out. Needs to come out? Okay, got right, it. Right, right. Stuff that needs to be purged, needs to, you know. Be revealed. And we, yeah, and God will reveal it to you <coughs> in, in time. But you see, here's another thing. You, you have, fasting will help you be humble enough to hear it. <laughs> see, because some of us, we're, we're, we're disobedient and we don't know it. Mm -hmm. We think we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. right. And so when we fast, God humbles us so that we can hear it when it comes across. Because he's given the word. He's telling us. But we don't see ourselves. That's right. Hmm. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm included. I mean, we just don't see ourselves until we get in a position. You know, you... You've got to look into the perfect law of liberty, which is this word. So that means you've got to hear the word. But if you can't hear it, then you've got to fast until you can hear it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you think you're okay. And you think, you know, i read another uh, story. How somebody was concerned about what somebody else was doing. And uh, they said, you know, they don't deserve uh, to be whatever. They don't mm -hmm. deserve this. And so the question was, do you, do you deserve to be forgiven? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid the price for all of us. None of us deserve to be forgiven. I don't care who we are. I don't care if he was saved at one. <laughs> you don't deserve to be forgiven. Amen. You, don't, you don't deserve it on your own merits. Amen. But you are forgiven because Christ paid the debt. Yes. That's what I was thinking when, when I was reading Romans and he describes the people that don't obey him. And then he says, but wait, he was talking to the Christians. And he said, well, you can't judge them because you do the same thing. Right. But we don't see it because we see ourselves as being saved and doing the right thing, but we do it partly. Yeah, we, yeah. we, we see only the, what we call the big sins. Yeah. And we're gonna talk about that later. But uh, we, because the big sins sometimes are, oh, I wish I had an hour to talk about this. <laughs> but I, I've been studying this we, we talk about the sins of Sodom and the sins of this and the sins of that. But what God looks at is not what we look at. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he, and he, here, here's, uh, let's, let me just read this again. He says, don't, I want you, what I want you to do is to execute true justice. And I want you to show mercy and compassion. Now this is the love connection. Amen. This is what I want you to show. Mm -hmm. sure. But we can we can flip out at people. You don't have the courage to flip out. That's right. 
Verdade. 